Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I will be doing a sketchbook tour. You might remember my video when I started this sketchbook in the beginning of 2022. So if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. I already finished it, so we are sitting down today and show you all the drawings and paintings I made in this book. So let's have a look, shall we? Just like my bullet journals, I love creating a welcome spread. I made this Art Attack inspired illustration. It is a memorable childhood art show that brought out the artist in me even as a kid. And it is fun to be childish with our art sometimes. I actually went back to repaint this again with a better quality gouache because I've been wondering if the paints I'm using are actually gouache though it is labeled so I couldn't help but compare it to other artists' paintings that use this medium so I learned that investing in great quality paints truly makes a difference. I challenged myself to draw or paint something every week for the whole year so I made this list of prompts, 52 ideas in total, as a guideline for what subject I can tackle for each week. But I will be honest, I didn't follow every single prompt and changed some of it. <laughs> But before we proceed with the tour, I just want to insert a little disclaimer or advice here that your sketchbook doesn't have to be like this. Especially if you're just starting out, you can absolutely make mistakes, experiment, have unfinished drawings. Your sketchbook can be as messy or as neat as you want. What you will see here is how I want it to be, so the intention of this tour is to inspire, not to discourage. Okay? Okay, so starting with the first prompt, it is called my ideal breakfast. I painted this with watercolors. In my country, the Philippines, this is our ideal and traditional dish for breakfast. Garlic fried rice with egg and any viand, whether it is fish, meat, or vegetable. We also love sauces. I painted vinegar with sliced onions and chili peppers and a cup of hot coffee. On the next spread is the hands prompt. I drew different hand positions and angles using a black fine liner and painted them with watercolors. I just wanted this piece to be an exercise, but I guess I need to draw more of these or dedicate another sketchbook for human anatomy. The next prompt was junk mail. I painted these stacks of letter mails and stamps with gouache. But at this point, drawing a hand with a pen and painting it with watercolors was easier for me than painting with gouache, so I tried to work on that in the next pieces you will see later. On the right is the prompt for my favorite piece of jewelry, and that is a ring, so I made my very own engagement ring as a reference for these drawings using ink and watercolors, and I also painted some pink washes around them. Another prompt is a famous architecture. I chose to draw and paint the Colosseum. I uploaded a process video of this piece earlier in the year and attempted it in the form of an urban sketch style. It had a lot of details, but it was pretty quick to finish since the structure has repetitive parts such as the arch doorways. I also painted the sky background in an abstract kind of shape. On the page next to it are some additional ink drawings that are not part of the prompt list. I skipped this page before to draw something else later related to the prompt, but I ended up drawing this 19th century fountain and a corbel. I usually draw with a pencil prior to any painting or inking, but here I just freehanded them so you can see the composition wasn't planned out. Before I got into paints, I draw a lot with a black pen, and the last time I freehanded something that I was so happy about was my illustration of Attack on Titan's Mikasa Ackerman. This is the illustration I painted for the word pastry. I chose to paint a millefeuille with berries. It looks so yummy if I can only turn this into a real one, but I had so much fun painting it. Across the spread, I painted my spilled beverage prompt. I thought it would be fun to pair my pastry illustration with a strawberry milkshake. Sadly, it spilled. <laughs> I painted both of these in watercolors. One of the places I would love to visit is Amsterdam. 
the largest city in the Netherlands and that is what I painted for this prompt. This was my very first gouache illustration with nature and buildings and I'm still exploring with the medium so when I finished painting, I was really proud of it. I also made a process video for this but it was the last sketchbook painting I made a video about because I didn't feel like it was worth filming anymore at the time but it was actually an opportunity for me to just have the process to myself to improve and it turned out to be a good decision and I hope you will see the progress as we flip through the pages. The next prompt is the market. The first picture that came to mind is our local market. The specific area I chose to paint here is where the fruit and vegetable stalls are. We now have supermarkets here inside a mall but the small vendors in our local market still has my heart and support. On the right side is my pots and plants prompt. I loosely painted these potted flowers with different kinds using watercolors and played around with the composition. This was also the time when I was preparing for a short vacation but taking a few minutes to paint in my sketchbook gave me the needed relaxation after planning and booking our trips. Up next on the left is the painting for growing. This idea that comes immediately to mind is a plant or a tree, so I painted a tree with the trunk having a form of a human in meditation with her flowers in bloom. I focused on detailing the tree while keeping the background and the grasses simple. It must have been nice for me to paint the growth stages, but I'm really happy with this piece. It reminded me of a great quote that says, A rooted spirit keeps the soul grounded. On the right is the painting for the prompt tree climbing. I painted this girl climbing a tree and I actually posted an Instagram reel of it and someone asked if it was Arietti from a Studio Ghibli movie. That time, I haven't watched a single Ghibli movie but it happened to look like her because of the color of her clothes. The following prompt is a portrait. The first watercolor attempt turned out to be a sad emo girl. <laughs> From here, you can actually tell that I didn't learn the basics yet on how to draw and paint a portrait. I was planning to paint several portraits here but I promised myself to learn how to easily draw portraits even without a reference first. So I went to YouTube and followed a great tutorial from Paipa of Paipa's Art. I was so happy when I was able to draw these pencil sketches because this will help me create my own style of character illustrations in the future. But it's another week, another prompt, and it is time for a Studio Ghibli movie scene. So I started to look for a movie to watch. I came across the Spirited Away movie and this was the scene that captured me. The scene looked intimidating at first because there was just a lot of elements here. But I took my time and broke it down to several parts. And finally, I finished this gouache painting after three days. It is another piece I'm really proud of in this sketchbook. On the next page, I painted my favorite recipe. This is a classic Filipino dish called adobo. Since we were colonized by Spain, it came from a Spanish word adobar, meaning marinade, sauce, or seasoning. I painted the ingredients and the cooked chicken adobo in watercolor and painted the whole background with gouache. I also wrote the name of the dish in a simple lettering, the ingredients names, and the cooking instructions on the bottom. Right beside it is a painting for vine. I chose to paint grapes in a vine with the same style as I did with the other painting, using watercolors for the foreground and gouache for the background. Hmm, I think both illustrations make a good pairing, a chicken dish, and grapes for wine. <laughs> Alright, here are my next two prompts, the gardener on the left and flower picking on the right. It was the month of May so this was a perfect time to paint some spring vibes. I painted the gardener illustration with more of the messy look especially when it comes to the greenery. But for the flower picking prompt, I painted the leaves one by one and layered them with different shades of green from darkest to lightest on top. I painted both of these with gouache but you can actually see a difference when it comes with the quality of paints 
On the left, I used HBW, a student grade gouache paint, and on the right, I used two artist grades called Royal Talents and Holbein. The Royal Talents and Holbein was really vibrant and vivid. The quality is still great after it dried, but despite the difference, I still made use of the student grade paints until they lasted because it's not that bad anyway. Next is my favorite sport. I love playing volleyball the most. I painted this in watercolors. But a funny thing about this composition is that the net was too low and I painted a spiking position. But it's okay, we have to move on. On the other side is the desert. I also painted a dreamy sky with fluffy clouds and a moon on the center. Though I'm happy with the desert part, I somehow was trying to achieve soft clouds but they turned out to be curvy. I had some what am I doing moments but all in all, it was a fun experience. Onto my 21st prompt is fishing. I simplified my process for this piece. The whole scene also felt so peaceful to me. I actually painted the seaside prompt next to it first and made it with a detailed approach, especially on the water reflections. I struggled with that part in the beginning of the process since I don't paint bodies of water a lot, but I kept on going and I am so far happy with the finished piece. This spread originally has two different prompts. The left is supposed to be a jellyfish, but I changed it into midnight. I just have moments like that where I planned on doing something, but doing something else in the end. <laughs> I thought of painting these floating lanterns inspired by my midnight painting sessions. I wanted to try how to paint the glow in the lights, and I also love the dark blue shade I used here for the night sky. The other side is supposed to be wildlife, but I wasn't happy with my composition for it, so in the end I came up with florals with bigger blooms of white flowers, though I would also name it as the negative prompt because of the negative background that made this whole painting even more beautiful in my opinion. This turned out to be one of my favorites too and something I will surely revisit for future paintings. Here we have two prompt opposites, the countryside and cityscape. Both were painted with gouache but in different styles. I painted a mill and grass field with dreamy clouds in a semi-realistic style, while the cityscape was done in a vector style. The countryside had more layers and brush strokes to build up the scene like the grass field than the cityscape that consisted of flat shapes. Up next is this watercolor painting for Under the Rain, a schoolgirl crossing the street. The key tool I used for this illustration to come to life is a white gel pen. Yes, white gel pen. So I painted the whole scene first, the reflections, and then I drew the raindrops and the motion of the water on the ground with the swirls and little strokes of white ink. On the right side is for street. I almost used the Under the Rain illustration for this, but I just drew this store and a second floor apartment on the corner of the street. I recently got some Ecoline watercolor brush pens at this time too, so that's the medium I used along with a black pen for this urban style street drawing. This is my interior illustration using watercolor and ink. I really like cafe interiors, so that's the first thing that came to mind. I wanted to capture an early morning scene with the first hours of sunlight coming through the windows. This is another piece that I really enjoyed creating in this sketchbook. Next is the broken pieces prompt. At first, I had something dramatic in mind, but I wasn't ready for it since it will also affect my mood. So the other idea I thought of is this broken pieces of jigsaw puzzle. It was super easy with the use of brush pens, a black pen, and a white gel pen. I was quite enjoying doing similar techniques in the previous prompts that I carried it in this afternoon nap illustration. I painted a dog having a nice afternoon nap on a beautiful chair with this warm ambience. I posted this over Instagram and someone said, he looked sad. Don't worry, he's just sleeping. <laughs> Next to it is self-care. My favorite form of self-care is watching movies, so that's what I painted here. 
I finally put down my watercolors and decided to use gouache. I attempted to paint a character with a face, <laughs> but I'm not sure what I feel about it. But looking at these two, I love how they correspond with each other. This is a gouache painting for the autumn landscape. A picture in the middle of the road with trees in their beautiful autumn colors and a mountain in the view. My paintings, by the way, are based on image references and as much as possible, I take them from my own photos or websites with royalty-free photos such as Freepik and Unsplash or properly crediting the artist for recreating their work. But in all honesty, in this mythical creature prompt, I wanted something that has whimsical effects, so I found this picture on Pinterest. I just want to try to recreate especially the magical effects around the antlers and capturing the different values in the photo. I tried to find the artist too, but all I could see was it being a background photo for a playlist of meditative songs. But if you happen to know, please inform me in the comments so I can properly credit the person in this study piece. This is another favorite of mine in this sketchbook. It is my prompt for smoke. I painted a hand holding a matchstick with the smoke left on it after burning the scented candle. But I also love how I painted every element of this picture, especially the reflections of the glass jars. On the right is a bookshelf prompt. I went for autumnal colors here and aside from the books, I also painted a sleepy cat, some vintage pieces, and vases of flowers. This was actually painted in a rush, but unfinished look still looks quite fine for me. The next one is something from the 70s. I skipped this page before since I didn't know what to paint yet, but in the end, I chose to draw a pair of roller skates using acrylic paint pens. This is actually a dance prompt, but I changed it to a skill I want to learn. Interestingly, I painted figure skating, which also has a dance discipline and similar to the previous prompt. I love dancing too, but I've been wanting to acquire skating skills for years. Anyway, on our next prompt is a crystal. I had the chance to try some watercolor pencils in here, and I enjoyed adding textures and creating more dimension to the piece. It's still a medium I'll have to try again soon because this is the only illustration I got to use them in this book. The original prompt for this week is bones. Again, I changed it. <laughs> I've already painted floating lanterns before, but on here, I went for a full-size vintage lantern and focused on the glow and details more. Next, I painted some oak leaves and acorns. This was a super quick one using watercolors and ink. It's not as challenging as the previous prompts, but it's also okay to paint something you are already familiar about. To the right is harvest. It was the season of apples, so I painted this almost realistic illustration of a basket full of gala apples. It's my favorite kind of apple. I was also able to focus so much here and I'm so so happy to achieve the look of the skin. Here's a full spread of my woodland prompt painting with gouache. This is like a happy gathering of animals in the heart of the forest. It also became a theme in my monthly bullet journal setups and you can see a significant reference from Disney's Bambi and added in a couple more animals in the composition. I fell in love with this piece because it made my inner child so, so happy. After a heavy painting, I went for simple and airy illustrations in these next prompts. This is for Fairy. My main inspiration for this style is from Sibeline Maynette, who also happens to be the artist behind this sketchbook design. I used acrylic paint pens here. As for the gnome, I used watercolors again. I was still in the month of November, but I guess the prompts I changed were mostly about the holidays and winter already. While I was searching for my next reference, I saw this picture from Unsplash and I immediately decided to go for it instead of my prompt for cuddle. 
I never painted something blurry before so I'm really happy to have taken the challenge and the results made me happy too. On the other side is my illustration for dried. A simple picture of dried sliced oranges was honestly a joy to paint. I used gouache to paint both of these by the way. You probably recognize this and a lot more if you also watch my bullet journal videos. My writing a letter prompt was my very inspiration for my 2023 bullet journal setup and also a theme related to my December spreads. I used watercolors for this and the knitting illustration next to it. It's funny how I painted the hands differently on both paintings by the way. <laughs> We have now reached my last two prompts. Obviously, this is the northern lights with a cottage in a snowy night. My first attempt doesn't really look like it, I guess. I think I went too much with the whites toward the top of the painting, but I can always try again next time. Lastly is a dreamy winter landscape. I painted this purple sky while the sun was setting. There's a lake on the center and snow-covered ground reflecting the colors of the sky. This was actually a painting class I followed on Skillshare and it was a fun one. Now that we are done with the prompts, I used the back pages to do some color swatches of the Ecoline brush pens. I wanted to create a loose floral illustration here, but I tested a clear gesso on this area for my recent project that was customizing a notebook cover. It obviously is not meant for watercolors, but it was a nice discovery. I also swatched Sakura watercolor pencils and Fairy's Willow Press fountain pen inks. You might recognize what I used this for too from my previous video. But that's everything I made in this sketchbook. It is diverse and I enjoy trying out a lot of styles and mediums. I'm still yet to hone my own style but this was a year full of learning experiences living inside this sketchbook. But I really hope you enjoyed this sketchbook tour. Have an amazing day and I will see you soon on my next video. Bye everyone!